chasing the police every single day. Like to, you can come back and get follow up information if you provide your email address um, or your physical address. If we do these again, we can notify you, or if you'd like results or things like that. Um, my name is Erin Graham. I'm the library supervisor over at the Mid County Regional Library here in Port Charlotte. Um, I'll be the one leading the conversation, and Michelle will be taking notes for us. Um, and hopefully, we'll have a nice conversation. So, I'm going to go over the ground rules and then we'll jump right in. We have an hour for the conversation. We do have to be out of here by 6 o'clock. So, we all agree to have a conversation where everyone participates and no one person dominates, to have a conversation with no right answers. Everyone has their own experiences, views, and beliefs. You do not have to be an expert to participate. To keep an open mind, listen carefully, and try to understand the views of others, even if you do not agree. To help, the to help keep the discussion on track with our own answers. That it is okay to, be, to disagree, but not to be disagreeable. And hopefully have some fun with this. So, we'll jump right in. And the first question, is what kind of community do you want to live in? What are one or two components that describe the type of community that you would like to live in? I was going to go first. Anybody? Friendly? People care about each other, but they really talk to each other. Oh, God, not again. Respectful community to talk to. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, I would like to live in a community where there's uh, less government and uh, less police and sheriff. Okay. Did you have something you wanted to say? No? Okay. I do. Yeah, sorry, I thought I saw your hand. I, I was, was just cool. letting everyone else go. Oh. Um, I don't know if you really know this, but basically these community discussions will, as, as in the first meeting, one, an ex-commissioner said, they will wind up with the commissioners. Yeah. So I would like a community that doesn't use the Delphi technique and have start, which starts out with these meetings where they gain this face, false consensus to get their projects done because they pick and choose from this meeting. And the list that you take, they'll take the list, but they'll only take what they want out of it and they'll toss the rest. So I'd rather have a community that doesn't manipulate the people with Delphi and doesn't do, uh, what do they call them, public-private projects like they did with the first couple meetings. Okay. They're going to build a bunch of affordable housing all of a sudden, and now they're actually letting the people know after they've had these meetings, they had them in government-subsidized housing. Well, of course, that's what those people are going to say. Okay. So it's all manipulated. Less manipulation would be nice by the government. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? Safe. Safe? Safe. Safe. Animosity between the community and the police force. Okay. It, it needs to it needs to stop. It needs to be a safe because it's creating more animosity, which is creating a less safe environment. Okay. Right. Does anybody have anything else? Yeah, guys, sir, you came in a little late, so I'm just gonna um, say the question again. So, what are one or two components that describe the type of community you would like to live in? So I don't know if you have anything you'd like to add. Not to put you on the spot, I'm sorry, but otherwise I was going to move on. But I wanted to give you, the, oh, yes, ma'am. I was just wondering, in all the previous conversations, there was a note taker. Yes. So how are you going to get a consensus you here? Know, Who's the, the note taker? Oh, you're, you're the right one. Yes. Okay, because yeah. we didn't have the old, you know, stand oh, and everything. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, Thank you. people have different styles of taking right. notes. That's fine. Yeah, so she is, she is recording what we say. Sure. Uh, yeah. Did you have something you'd like to add? Well, I would just say that I haven't lived here that long, a couple of years, and uh, the reason I moved here was um, the character of the community and whatnot, and I'd like to see that retained. Okay. I would like to see a, a place that people can afford to live here, you know, work <coughs> here, get a decent wage, have a place to live. Great. Um, I'm in favor of all of those things. I'm not necessarily in favor of um, what has happened uh, as far as affordable housing goes okay. to date. I don't think uh, the commissioners really have their heart in, in that matter. <laughs> and, um, well, I can talk about that later, possibly. Okay. But. All right, thank you. All right, so um, how is the community different from the way you see, uh, how is that community different from the way you see things in your community now? So how, what are the differences between what you would like to see and what you actually see now? Yes, that's okay, yeah. Okay, well, if you start with government, as some people have mentioned, government in Charlotte <coughs> County, uh, I keep saying there's no transparency. They're not telling the people everything. They don't do what they want to do. And I keep saying they were elected 
by the people who live here, not the ones they're going to bring in, not the ones, the builders, etc. They were elected by the people who live here, and they should respect them, and they should share with them anything that's going to happen, anything that's going on. And uh, because you mentioned affordable housing, uh, it's true, they don't have affordable housing. And I was asked just today about affordable housing, and I said, I think companies such as large companies like, we'll say, uh, Well, I guess uh, any, any companies that are corporate, you know, the corporations are elsewhere, and they come here and they're all over the country, uh, that companies like that, they should be willing to get together and build the affordable housing because they need the staff, they need the people, they need hundreds of people uh, to work in their shops, their stores, their factories, whether it's Cheney Brothers or Walmart, Walmart, we have six Walmarts, I think. And I think they should be providing some of that affordable housing and sun seeker if they get off the ground. Uh, any business in the Murdoch Village that might get off the ground. I think they should have be so, part of the part of the solution. So more transparency, more <coughs> companies being part of the solution in the community. Solution. Okay. Does anybody have anything? Yes. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, does yeah. that mic oh, does that microphone work by any chance? I can't uh, hear anything anyone's yes. saying. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I try to get people to sit more towards the front, but we, we can are. we can use the mic, I think, too. I think it's working. Yes. Yeah. Hello? Okay. Oh, okay. Did you? I'll run it around for you. Can you repeat the question real quick first? Oh, yeah. It was, um, how is the community different? How is the community different from the way you see things in your community now? So how is your ideal community different from how you see things now in Charlotte County? Um, she and Joan had been talking about more affordable housing, companies playing a bigger role in developing more affordable housing and playing a bigger part in the community. Um, more transparency, I believe you said as well. Um, does anybody have anything else that they would like to add? Yeah. Okay. Um, again, the government's getting involved in the affordable housing. If there's affordable housing that's needed, the private sector will provide it. But one thing that I've noticed is, again, in the first meeting, there was an ex-commissioner. He said, we need to have more free amenities for people to draw more people. Well, why is there a shortage of housing? Why are we drawing more people if we already don't have houses? Why don't we have enough houses? Because they've drawn too many people with too many government freebies. If they would stop that, there'd be enough housing. And, it would, and there wouldn't be a shortage. And if there's not a shortage, the price goes down as well, too. Okay. So I don't believe in public-private partnerships and I believe I'm pretty sure the Constitution even says that that's not right but they do it anyway it should be private and public two separate things Thank okay you. no problem yeah. it's not. Uh, so like I was saying um, <clears throat> my name is Andy I'm a reporter for cop watch and like I was saying I would like smaller government less police less sheriff and for, and for what I see right now is ungodly but the biggest employer in town is the government uh, um, we are supposed to be a republic, a free country, capitalist, not a socialist, fascist one, which, which is literally what I feel here. Um, literally everything is illegal, including with the government. You have the code Nazi police out messing with people every single day. Uh, the, the, the sheriff is putting the people in jail for anything and everything. You have one joint, you go to jail. How cost effective is that? That's, that's stupid. There is no victim there. Okay. So um, that's, what I, that's the difference I see right now and uh, I, I'm wishing for freedom like our, uh, I used to have on 53 in the 80s, you know, in high school, I, you know, I actually smoked pot, sold pot, it wasn't a big deal. Okay. And, and now they're going to, they crucify you. It, it, it is sad. So that's all. Okay. Do, uh, yes. I would just like to say on the transparency issue that I don't see a whole lot of it here compared to other places that I've lived. And I've lived a lot of other places in the United States. And uh, uh, case in point, this development that they built on Peachland and veterans, uh, the commission has already had their minds made up well before there was any hearings on the subject at all. And it's, the issue started out by them saying that it was going to be workforce housing, it was going to be low cost, it was going to be affordable, housing that is affordable. And the rents that were first discussed were like $750 uh, per month starting. Now it's up to $950, and the place hasn't even been constructed yet. Okay. Um, so who knows what it's going to be once people move in, and of course you have all the traffic ramifications. So at that time I had asked the commissioners, uh, were they in favor of like fairly and equitably distributing of 
affordable housing throughout the county. And all I ever got then was silence. And I asked them the same question about a week ago at one of the meetings. And silence again. Okay. So now we have another development that they're looking at. And it was in the paper today, 600 yep. possible rentals. And uh, they're going to put a spin on it, I guess, to make it somehow, this, as this gentleman spoke of, some quasi-government uh, private enterprise uh, <laughs> thing, which might have income limits, might not might change down the road. So at this point, I don't know what to believe. There's a credibility gap in what mm -hmm. the commissioners are saying and what's actually happening. Okay. And I don't think, right from the start, I'll tell you, I don't believe that this particular one, after the residents have already been sold a bill of goods on the other one, <laughs> on veterans, now to have another one a mile and a half down the road or whatever it is, it's very close. Mm -hmm. What about the rest of the county, I asked them. Do we have Cheney Brothers? biggest employer. No, put housing down there. What about the airport? Huge uh, generator in this county. Put housing there. There's many other places. It's a big county, but all the commissioners, um, with the exception, one says that we don't need any affordable housing, that the market will take care of itself. I'm more inclined to believe that person than the other four mm. who just want to put it all in one place in the county. Okay. So unless you're for fair and equitable distribution of it, you're not really for affordable housing. Amen. Thank you for listening. To no that problem. Speech. Does, does anybody have anything else that they'd like to add about the differences they see with their community now versus the one? Yes. Um, next month it'll be 34 years since I've lived here, and I find that the community is much more polarized than it was when I first came here. Okay. And I'm not quite sure why that is. There seems to be an utter lack of civility in public discourse as well. And that's regrettable, I think. Great. All right, so let's move on to question number three. Um, what are one or two of the most important issues or concerns that you have when it comes to community? You keep volunteering to go first, Joe. Okay. <laughs> well, community, as I said, I love Charlotte County. I've lived here for 23 years. And I've seen changes, but it's a, it's a wonderful place. It's, uh, it's up to us to keep it that way, though. If we live here, we've got to keep it that way. Whether it's the uh, environment, the housing, uh, growth in Charlotte County, uh, businesses, all of these things, that's our responsibility to speak out like we are today. I consider this important to speak out and uh, let our government know what's going, what we think, what's going on. I know some of the people here, and you've been to these uh, commission meetings and spoken out, and you kind of get a deaf ear half the time. But I'm hoping that we can change that a little bit because uh, I think we have to keep speaking out and make it what we want it to be, a real community where people care about each other and the environment. Look what we've just gone through. You know, what they talked about, the still going through it. Yes, the recession in 2008, and now this, this is going to be just like that recession. People are not going to come here. They're going to stay away. They can go to Arizona or someplace else. Yeah. Landlocked. Yeah. Just, okay. <laughs> Okay, I believe there's a big difference between community and communitarianism. <laughs> I don't know if anyone knows what communitarianism is, but it's basically part of, uh, basically, a government agenda. A community, when you talk about community, you talk about neighbors loving neighbors, okay? That's individual. It's individual freedom. It's individual neighbors. The government's not going to fix anything. The government's broken most of this stuff. And mm -hmm. someone said there's polarization. And, if you look around, you'll find out a lot of that has to do with politics and government. It's not neighbors, and, and again, neighbors don't tend to love neighbors. I see them being harmed, again, usually by the government, and I don't see neighbors standing up for neighbors. I see neighbors trying to get more using the government from their other neighbors. So community is awesome. Communitarianism is the opposite, actually, of community. And one last thing on, on civil and civility. I know I've looked up the word civil in Black's Law Dictionary, and basically, if you look through the definition, it's without God. Not civil, respectable and civil is different. Civil is government. So, you know, civil, just because you're saying something somebody else doesn't agree with doesn't mean it's not civil. Okay, okay thank you. No problem. Yes. 
So, so the main thing I, I, I got to mention again, and I was just, uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, uh, I was just at the sheriff's office, uh, you know, doing some more investigations. I was, uh, the other day I was at the uh, Shire County Courthouse. And, and to me, in my opinion, that, that is the main problem here. Like I said, it, it's the government's out of control. The sheriff is out of control. It poli it's like policing for profit here is the second industry other than snowbirds. Uh, you got six floors of tyranny at the courthouse. You got the, the sheriff has 600 employees. If you weren't policing for profit, you wouldn't need that many. You wouldn't need to jail that. In fact, the sheriff, the sheriff just did that article just lately that he's got to stop putting so many people in jail because they can't even hold them all. Okay. And there again, like I said, no victim, no crime. Stop policing for profit. And, and that, like I said, that includes the government. The, the government is using their code Nazi police just to ruin people. They don't have to do eminent domain anymore. They'll code Nazi your ass right out of here. Can we just keep the language. Okay. Oh, that's right. We yeah. are in a church. We are that, in a church. That is church. true. Yeah. yeah. There we go. So anyways, uh, yeah, they will just code code Nazi you right out of here. I mean, they don't have to emanate domain you. They will just keep a running fine. There's one guy we know that has a 9,000. Okay. Yeah. More than one person. A $9,000 running daily. The daily fine is how much? Okay, who cares? It's ridiculous. Nine thousand dollars. I mean, and he's poor. How is he going to afford that? So guess what? Instead of eminent domain, they just got it through a running fine. They're going to take his house. That is wrong. That is un-American. That's it. Does, yes. And I agree uh, in a way with the gentleman who just spoke because I deal with both sets of communities, if you if you want to call it that. Um, in East Punta Gorda, I know personally of people whose bicycles have just crossed yep. the white line yep. and they've been pulled up. <clears throat> they've no idea where the police were. Now, mm. I live in the in Panagoda Isles. Such a thing would never, ever happen. Why is Correct. that, people? Why? Correct. We all know the answer to that one. Correct. Does anybody have anything else that they would like to add? She okay. was correct. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, um, how <laughs> issues or concerns that you just brought up affect you personally, impact you personally. Does anybody besides Joan want to start? <laughs> <laughs> no? yeah. Okay, I'm just teasing Joan. You can always start if you want to. Yeah. How does it impact us, you or me? Uh, I live in a nice neighborhood. Uh, when I moved here, I told my visitors on the fourth house on the left when you make that left turn. Now I'm the 17th house on the left. So I'm not against girls. I think it's great, but I'm not. I'm not in favor. We'll say something like Sunseeker, because they are not part of the community. They do not want to be part of the community. But I think our community is good, basically good. And there's so many people here. I heard something about oh, well, you know how many retirees there are there. These are retirees are very skilled, highly intelligent people who volunteer all over the county. We could not do it without them. They're wonderful. And so I have a great respect for retirees, the people who volunteer, and I've even said to the commissioners at times, uh, what, do we have to uh, have all the volunteers take off on Tuesday so they can come here to your meeting to speak out? I mean, you have to say these things to them. But uh, most of you know that I'm running for Charlotte County Commission, and uh, so we'll see what happens November 6th. But uh, that's when I take this hat off. It stays on until I win the election. But yeah, we want to see change, but uh, as I say, we can do it. Together we can do it. Yes. Uh, so that's a great question. So that is why I became a, a reporter for CopWatch six years ago. Uh, you brought the, ha, how have I been affected? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the the co-Nazis came to my house. Uh, Apparently, uh, I own my own house. Uh, apparently, you have no rights to your house, even though you own it outright. Uh, at least they think so. And I, apparently, I put in too many windows. Oh my God! So they have this guy come to my house, and he's and I had it on film. Well, I did until the sheriff took down my YouTube page. But uh, he's coming around my house, and he's literally walking around my house. Okay, this is illegal. This is illegal. This is illegal. And my wife had breast cancer at the time. Uh, and I'm like, could you please stick to one thing here? This is my house, my property. You're making this huge list. He said, oh, I'll be nice. I'll just charge you with the windows then. I'm like, wow, thanks a lot. And then with the, 
And then with the police, it, it, I, I have unfortunately experienced that too. I had a bad neighbor, he was a stalker, the, uh, the deputy that was helping me uh, was actually in the end, they found out he was not helping me, took the stalker to court, uh, the, the stalker hired a good lawyer, flipped the deputy, did perjury against me, and got the case thrown out. That's how have I have experienced it. If you wouldn't mind. Um, I just have maybe an issue with the question itself. How does it affect you personally? Should it have to affect us personally? That's That goes back to not only what this church teaches, love your neighbor, but the golden rule, you should think of others. So if you see others being harmed, you should help them and you should do something. And I haven't, I don't know if I've been attacked other than highly taxed. I don't know if I've been attacked. I've been taxed. <laughs> I don't know if I've been attacked. <laughs> Um, but I've seen it happen over and over, and mm -hmm. I try to do what I can to help other people. And of course, even if you're selfish, if you see that happening to them, it can happen to you at any point. So, great. Yes. The question is: Somebody mentioned Sunseeker, and I just wanted to comment on that because um, I think there's a lot of people that live in this area that moved here from the Midwest. I seem to admit a lot of people from Michigan. I moved here from Kentucky. But I think we have some Midwestern values, a lot of us that are a little different than what I'm seeing with the developers that want to build here. And with Sunseeker, it's a Legion Airlines, it's I guess Las Vegas based. And some of the CEO, the president, I forget what his title is, some of his comments in the newspaper I find somewhat um, repulsive actually. Mm. He's talking about the airport and he's uh, the only airline that goes into Punta Gorda Airport and they basically own the airport, it's their airport. So, you know, pride goes before uh, destruction and the Holy Spirit before the fall. And sometimes I looked at the span of that project when it first came out, nine towers or something like that, and the only thing they were discussing was how high they were going to go, right on the water. And yet, you know, in my mind, there was a lot of red flags immediately. But the commissioners, the first thing they did was have a big party, welcoming here, them here. This was the greatest thing that was ever going to happen at Port Charlotte. They said it was going to put Port Charlotte on the map. Well, I moved here. I, Port Charlotte's already on the map. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> so I'm a little concerned that developers are the ones that are running the show here. And mm. um, basically, I think they're walking all over our commissioners, okay. giving them whatever they want. Okay, thank you. The, yes. Um, I think the CEO you're referring to might be John Redmond. Um, anyway, moving on. I think you should expunge the question, respectfully, may I add, you, I think you should expunge the question, how does it affect you personally? Right. It really shouldn't. That should not matter, right. as the gentleman before me said. We really should follow the golden rule and be kind to our neighbors, whoever they are. Uh, and that is an extension we should extend it to the community as well. The way this has affected me personally is in a sort of a skewed way. When I was on the board of the, of the Homeless Coalition, we were tasked to go out into the woods to get the number, number of the homeless count. And obviously this was to get, I know I heard, I heard your question, your mental question, why? Uh, this was to um, get their grants, the number of homeless people that we needed. So there I was in the middle of the night, tramping the woods. And there is an alternate university just beyond US 41. Now this was before Charlie, and I was stunned to, to discover that, you know, um, racetrack just over the bridge, just beyond that, there was a whole homeless population and there was a young mother with a couple of small children living in a pup tent. This is an obscenity in the richest country in the world. Those kinds of things should not be. And it affected me to this day, it affects me personally. And that's why I give up my time. Does anybody have anything else that they would like to add? Okay. Yes, great. I would just like to compliment you on that little speech there. You're absolutely right. All these homeless people we have in the richest country in the world is an outrage. And, and the homeless veterans. Yes, yes. And But yet we've got a church on every corner that locks its doors every night. And uh, 
heats the big giant airspace in the winter and air conditions the big giant airspace in the summer and yet the building is empty 90% of the week. It just, it's a really grotesque contradiction okay. in what, you know, we, we claim to be in America. And, uh, it's just a sad commentary. Signs of the times. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so um, what are some of the things that need to happen to create the change that you would like to see? So there have been a variety of issues that people have talked about. What do you think needs to happen to create the change that you would like to see? How about throw the bombs out? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's okay. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to shout it out. Yeah. No, it's okay. I, um, I just said throw the bombs out. Okay. Throw the bombs out. Is anybody? Yes. Okay. No? I don't want to. I'll go after you. Individual people need to start standing up for their rights mm. and for their neighbors. They need to start telling the government what the government's supposed to do instead of the government telling them what to do. That's what this country was founded on, natural law, not the governmental one million laws that they have. And people need to start making the changes themselves. Uh, if they have to file, I hate to say, lawsuits, they need to go in and do it themselves instead of hiring lawyers. But, Throw the bums out is basically what I'm trying to say, but just a little longer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, I, I agree. We uh, we we uh, like it. I keep going back to it because it's so bad. Yeah, we got to get rid of Shara County Sheriff Bill Permal. This is just completely out of control. I've never seen uh, corruption like this. We we just this this is so so bad that out of 600 employees in six years, you had 350 people fired, retired, or quit. Because the corruption is so bad, I mean, people are people are leaving be, because of that. So, the, so yeah, we got to get rid of Bill Permal. We got to get rid of the uh, uh, council members and uh, stop policing for profit. Uh, get a constitutional sheriff in there. Get some constitutional council members in there that uh, are back to smaller government, not this out of control stuff. Okay. Yes. I would like to say that. On the sheriff's department, I've lived in a lot of other places. This sheriff's department is huge there. <laughs> and when I asked about it, all I'm told is, well, they have the jail that's under their jurisdiction as well, and that's why they're so big. Okay. But the last year when they requested their budget, mm -hmm. um, they requested a huge amount. Yep. And, of course, they got it. There was no compromise. The sheriff wouldn't compromise and cut it in half Correct. or anything. So I, I think... It is asking a lot for people because people are paying for that. We, we're individual citizens are paying for that. And um, a lot of us are retired, living on a limited income, whatever. And um, I think sometimes that that's been lost sight of. Okay. Um, does anybody have anything else that they would like to add? Yes. Sir? Yes. Thank you. I appreciate that. The um, question again, because the gentleman asked, were, what were some of the things that need to happen to create the change that you would like to see? Okay, since government is out of control, we the people need to micromanage government. They need micromanaging. They can't seem to manage it themselves without paying attention to the money power or the interest uh, in business. And the best way to do that is to um, break down the county uh, into districts by zip code and have common citizens uh, of the lowest denominator, lowly esteemed people, be a voice in the community. People that are not beholden to manipulation or money. That's a biblical principle in the Bible it talks about appointing those least among you to be judges. So we need to divide counties up in by zip code districts, like a miniature Congress, uh, a county Congress. And that way we would have equi equitable voice of the people based upon their little neighborhood, their community, uh, or you could call it a community Congress. But the fact is government has become a beast. It's too big for its britches. It needs taken to the woodshed very physically, literally, 
and uh, especially those with brutal power that kill people, like the Charlotte County Sheriff's Department Correct. has killed many people Correct. in this county, unarmed. Correct. Um, this needs to stop. And if they don't change, it's going to cause a rebellion of the people, a violent rebellion, and rightly so. Yeah, I mean, you, especially Sorry. like you've got Sunseekers coming in, that's going to going to escalate the problem. They can't even get a grip on it now. And I mean, I, this may sound so stupid, but I mean, I don't even know if I want to bring it up. I mean, bring it up. The, the whole, like, we came across someone who, speaking like, yeah, they can't hear you in the back, sorry. Oh, okay, well, they, um, <laughs> it, it needs, it, I mean, from the simplest to, to the biggest, I mean, the, the whole bicycle thing. We know somebody who got arrested and spent 30 days in yep. jail because she had her back light covered up on her bike. It was actually lit. She ran a stop sign. And so she did, She like the cops pulled her over and got out of hand. But then, like, I see bicycles every day going down the wrong side of the street. And there was one guy the other day, he was actually on the right side of the street. If he was coming up the wrong side of the street, I would have hit him. And then you, you hear about bicycles getting hit all the time. It, and this may sound so stupid in the realm of everything that's being talked about, but it's all about the policing and stuff. Like, there's a way to police. There's a way for each one of us to act. They have authority granted to them, and they're acting less than those that they're supposed to be policing. Right. You know, I mean, like it all needs to come together and it needs to start at the top. Um, they need to like, like humble themselves already. Like they've gotten so out of control. Okay, thank you. Did, John, do you have anything? Oh, okay. All right, thank you. So the next question is what groups or individuals would you like to see take action to make the changes? So are there specific groups or individuals that you would like to see make the changes? <coughs> Well, the largest group that I can think of are the voters. You have to start by changing the, the people who are there. <clears throat> when you, uh, most of our commissioners, they've been there for two terms. Uh, so they assume you like what they're doing. <coughs> Commissioner Constance had no one run against him, so he has to tell himself they like what I'm doing. So somehow you have to get out there, you have to change that. People ask me, why are you running? Why am I running? I said, that's why. We have to change this. I go to some, almost all of their meetings. I speak at every meeting. I don't hold back on them. I send them emails. I've said nasty things to them. I've told them exactly what they are, what they're doing. And I think they respect me a little bit for that because they know very well that uh, they have to hear this from the public. But if the public doesn't say anything, if you don't send them emails and say something, but even your emails, they're just buried. No one knows what's in the emails. Um, just recently at a meeting, I said that to them. I said, well, this is the second uh, dog and pony show I've been to in two months. That's what their meetings are like. Uh, the, at all the advisory groups in the county, there are over 400 people who volunteer on the advisory groups. And they were all, in the past two months, told, you have no power. You may not say anything. You may not make decisions. You may not. These are people who have volunteered for years, people they put on the advisory board. They don't want to hear from them. The Charlotte Harbor Advisory Board was just told, you can only meet every three months now, not every month. And the chair of that group asked, well, what if you call a special meeting? Because they said they will have special meetings. You're not invited. This is the, the advisory board who has been working with them. They don't want them to know. So you have to vote. If you want to change things, get out there and vote. Get out there and let them know they're not going to stay there. Yes. Again, I don't think necessarily groups will help, but individuals need to educate themselves, again, on natural law. They need to, as somebody said at one of the earlier meetings, learn how to smell a rat. We were talking about education, and the kids are not taught to think, they're not taught to critically think, and nobody even studies the same thing that the founders of this country studied when they created the country, when everything was so good at the beginning. Nobody knows that anymore. People need to study on their own 
and they need to increase their discernment and be able, so they can pick somebody that's right. If they're not educated, they're always going to be bamboozled by somebody. Okay, so she was next, and then yep. you. I am a very firm believer in the power of one. Many ones make a group, and we have to organize. And I have done that. Nothing big, small changes, and I have effected change. So I think, as the gentleman before me said, individuals, we, each one of us has the responsibility to create change. You know, that, that was a good point. I know a, a group of individuals that if we let them know that if they got together and got their voice out, if we, if we got a hold of all the victims of the police, the sheriff, and the code Nazis, and let them know if they all stood together and fought this crap, we could take it back. That, okay. That's a great idea. <laughs> yes. First of all, I'd like to see uh, the state of Florida legalize the citizen militia so that when a sheriff's department gets out of control, like Bill Promel in Charlotte County, Florida, the citizen militia could become organized, called up by citizens to stop his tyranny by force. But we would first need to legalize it in the state legislature of Florida. Secondly, if uh, we, we were able to form a body politic in the county, called a county congress, where we have zip codes as districts, then we could become a legal body that would have standing and jurisdiction. This is the theater or the battlefield that these issues need to be fought in because the politicians refuse to listen and refuse to obey. They don't know how to obey, we the people. Does, does anybody have anything? else that they'd like to okay so um, we got about two more questions and we have about 15 more minutes just an FYI um, so what would be a future indication sorry what would be a future indication to you that the changes were beginning to occur so what, what what would you see as like positive changes happening what would you see be a future indication that these changes that you would like were starting to happen I think it's critical that there be a change in the commissioners. I know only one's up for re-election that's unopposed right now. But that change in itself would signify to me that people are actually paying attention and they want something different. The commissioners now, the five of them, they claim they all get along well together. <laughs> and I'm sure they do. But they don't get along well with me and with you and with the community because they're not in touch with the community as far as I'm concerned. Does anybody, anybody have anything else that they'd like to say for that question? Yes. Uh, I, I think there's some people that uh, know me and you know what I've done for six years and I think slowly but surely it is starting to happen and crack a little bit. Like I said, the sheriff actually finally did an article where he's talking about, yeah, maybe we shouldn't put everybody... Bible study, sorry. Maybe we shouldn't put everybody in jail for, you know, one joint. That is kind of stupid. Uh, um, there are children, so. Oh. I'm sorry, Bible study just came in, so if you wouldn't mind. So we cannot not say pot, Well, joint. maybe use marijuana instead marijuana. of. Marijuana. There you go. Yeah, I don't All know. Right. Like, at least so anyways, I think it is slowly but surely starting to happen. Yeah. We just need to keep the hammer down. Okay. Sorry, the little kids are right. in here for right. Bible study, so yes. It's been said that maybe we should break down into zip codes, etc. We already have five districts, but no one in Charlotte County goes out there to fight for them to have our commissioners elected just by their district to represent their district. There are five districts. So everyone in the county gets to vote for the commission. And therefore, some areas have a heavier uh, inf uh, influence more by one party, and that's what they do. That's how, how they keep them in. The money, the money that flows, that's part of it. Look at the money in the primary election. They were talking about the kind of money that was brought in for the airport authority. That was terrible. For, I can say my opponent, because I only take lo from local people. I only take from residents. And I will take $5, I've told them. 
My, my treasurer doesn't like that, but it doesn't matter. I said, that's what I want. I want their votes, not their money. And I, I know that. So we have to, let's try to do something. Somebody here, start that. Try to get it, like Sarasota's trying, to get the commissioners elected by their district, not overall. That's a great start. Yes. And then I think you were next, ma'am, but yeah. A change that I, I think something that if you saw a change, I think the commissioners' meetings, instead of having zero to maybe two or three people out of 180,000, if you saw the commissioners' meetings full of people, I think that would be an indication of change. I don't see it happening at all. I don't see it growing, but if you, and you see it once in a while, but if you started seeing that all the time, first of all, there's enough of us to actually, uh, I can't think of the word, but if enough of us came in there, they wouldn't be able to get half of the bad stuff they did done. Mm -hmm. They'd be sitting there speaking all day. Correct. They would get tired, and they've tired out. I've seen them with the sewers. We tired them out. Correct. We were there until 12:30 at night. 400 people showed up, and we stopped them at least temporarily. <laughs> and there's 180,000 people here. It only takes like 150 each time. <laughs> all right. So last question. Um, unless did you? I'm sorry. Did you? Were you? Did you have something you'd like to yeah, add? Yeah, I just kind of wanted to reiterate what he said a little bit. You know, look at. How many people are here tonight? Yeah. <laughs> people don't feel like their vote makes a difference. They, it, it, there's been so much corruption in the in the in the vote voting booth. People don't even feel like they make that they have the ability to make a difference. They don't feel like the politicians, those in control, have their best interests at heart. They don't think that they care. So, like, they it just it needs to be more evidence that. The powers that be are paying attention and listening. I mean, this whole sun secret thing. I mean, I don't. I, I just moved here a couple of years ago. I'm not even sure when that got voted. If it got voted on, if it got voted in, I know Puno Borda said, "Oh no, no, that's not going in here." So they move it across the harbor. I mean, that's going to be havoc for poor Charlotte. Um, okay. So, yes. Okay. <clears throat> there are three beautiful, the most beautiful words in the English language, and that is, we the people. Mm. I don't think we realize the tremendous power that we have, and we really should use it. Oh, great. Okay, so last question, um, and it is, how do you see Charlotte County Community Services, if at all, impact and change? So the library is part of um, Community Services, we're part of the Libraries and History Division, do you see us or other groups in community services, parks and rec, or something, you know, some of the, our groups impacting change? Yes. I have asked this question at previous conversations. Why don't you bring back Monday's opening? I mean, the downturn happened 10 years ago, and that was the reason The why libraries. The libraries. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, and I'm trying to get out of your way to go right into it. Why yeah. is it that it is still closed on Mondays? <laughs> Mid County's open on Mondays, but we are the only one. Uh, yes. Uh, I, I've said that it says on the meeting they freaked out when I said, I think we actually don't need the libraries anymore. When you look at the history of libraries, we started it because we, we were poor back then. You can literally, it was on the radio today, seriously, that how you can, if your school is bad, you don't even need to go to school anymore. They literally have courses you can take on your phone, your tablet, your laptop. Like I said, libraries were started because not everybody had books back then, and they couldn't learn all this stuff. We are far past that. I, I, I think we don't even need them. And the Parks and Rec is completely out of control. Charlotte County owns 40% of the property here. That's that. Yeah, the government. It's, it's ridiculous. So the question was about how you how the libraries or community services can we impact change. So if the answer is no, that's fine. But like that, we're, we're supposed to be focusing on how we can impact change. Hmm. So we could focus on the question. I had something and I lost it. Sorry. Okay, sorry. <laughs> All right, well, if, it, if you think about it, we can come back to you. Does anybody else? Yes. Uh, to answer the question, how can the library help? Not the just the library, community services. I'm sorry, just to correct myself, because I think well, I said library. Yeah, the community services. Uh, they can start by uh, doing a better job at marketing or advertising for these meetings. You know, you have a huge building here today, seating around the 500, and you have, you have maybe 10 people, <laughs> you, you have maybe 10 people 
half of which are at every single meeting. So it's, it's a dismal uh, attempt on the community services part, the government's Amen. part, to get the voice of the people heard. I, you could have used a variety of means in the newspaper that are free. Uh, that wasn't done. I looked in the paper this week, last week, didn't see anything about this meeting. Uh, this, this one was originally supposed to happen in August, yeah. so I did go out in the paper in August because it was rescheduled. Okay, what, what's the point of making that statement? I, I don't know. I was just letting you know that it was advertised I, in the paper I, yeah. a month ago. A month ago. A month ago. No, you're right. for, yeah. for a totally different date. Yeah. So that's a moot point, I, with all due respect. No, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Very and, and, and in addition to that, the community services and the library can stop charging outrageous fees to use the meeting rooms. Mm. Okay. They need to be free. Okay. 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 Like other counties. Other counties let their people use their meeting rooms for free. So please tell the library. Yes, okay. I don't know who is first. Okay. Right. Uh, no, they need to shrink community services, so I wouldn't think they need to be Okay. Correct. That was my point. Yeah, as far as community services, I did bring this up to the commissioners this past week when they had their meeting. That was a very long meeting. Everything was, of course, they did not meet in August, and there were so many things that were listed under just at the very beginning, you know, they can approve everything with just their vote. I don't like that. I think each item should be discussed. But as far as the uh, price, the charging for the rooms, I brought that up. I said they should not be charging for the rooms because Sarasota does not charge. I said that uh, the parks, and it was in the paper the previous day, I read it to them. I said, four-year-olds can go to the park for, it's $20 for one child for 45 minutes to play ball, to learn to play some kind of ball, four-year-old. And if you have two children, it's $10 for the next one. I think some of the commissioners did not realize that because they looked a little bit shocked when I said it, but it was in the paper and it's Parks and Rec. It was over at the Tringali area. So yes, that should stop. What but that, did they say? What was the response? But they don't respond. Remember that. They do not respond to you when you speak at the meetings, right. But I go by the look on their face. I know a few of them did not realize that and I think they would look into that too. But. I am concerned with the libraries uh, because I've been president of the Friends, I was president for seven years, so, and I love the libraries, so please do not get rid of the libraries. But I do want to know about the uh, uh, history collection, which was moved to the Mid-County Library. And I know it's locked up in the library, it's really, there's nothing much that you can access. The, some of the books, the old books. The but, archives are in Englewood, never to be seen again. Yes, the archives are in Englewood. This was over on Grace Street, yes, and that was taken that. out, right? And Stop now the, the city of Punta Gorda is talking about they should take over the whole collection and have it in that in the library, the Punta Gorda Library, the old library. They want that building because the library is getting a new building in Punta Gorda, the Punta Gorda Charlotte Library it will be. So they want that building, the old building then, which is not finished yet, not out. The people are not out yet. They want that for the history collection and many, many other things. And I don't think it belongs there. I think it belongs here in the center of town somewhere, whether it's at the cultural center or it's uh, at the library. If the library does, you know, organize and have a wonderful display for it, etc. Uh, I loved it when it was at the uh, Live Oak Park, when it was right up there on the beach. And that disappeared, even though I spoke against taking it down. Uh, so we have, we try. We have to keep trying. You cannot stop. That's important. You do not stop trying. So, uh, I think that's about it for us. So we can obviously see the other groups are coming in. So thank you guys all for coming tonight, and thank you again to the Baptist Church for. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, if you haven't already signed in, please do so before you leave, and most of you already did. But again, thank you to everybody for attending, and thank you to the Murdoch Baptist Church for letting us have the space tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Police use who may want to retaliate against him physically. Hey, Sheriff County. This is Sheriff County Cop Watch, and I just wanted you to know that uh, I am using this stuff under fair use. 
and uh, also uh, remember to like and subscribe this channel uh, also to uh, keep in mind I do not make any money on YouTube uh, this is uh, five hours work a day uh, you know fighting for freedom and uh, I do I you can donate with PayPal and patreon uh, I just want you to think about this if everybody gives uh, to PayPal and Patreon. Patreon is every month. Actually, PayPal you can do every month. I have 12,000 subscribers. If everybody gives, I can uh, quit my regular job and go full-time investigations on Charlotte County and possibly even more and beyond. So just keep that in mind. If everybody helps out, I can go full-time doing this. Thanks.